Hello, Crossing Church Life Groups. This is your second week into this series that we're doing called Wreck the Roof. And I hope that God is speaking to you dramatically, not only what, with what's happening on the weekends, but also in this life group. As you just drill down into God's Word, you start sharing with each other. And it's incredible, isn't it, when we start sharing with each other our stories and how those stories and our life's journey interfaces with God's Word. The one that we're going to discuss today has got to be one of the most poignant, most emotional stories in the New Testament. It's the woman that Jesus meets on the street. When uh, we uh, normally talk about her, we talk about the woman with the issue of blood. But I just picture her as a woman on the street. I'm literally meaning on the street. Let me explain. Because of this woman's physical problem with bleeding, she is ceremonially unclean. That means that she can't go uh, to the temple. She can't offer sacrifices. She can't do, even present herself to a priest. She can't do anything. She's blocked spiritually from God because of this sickness that she has. And she spent all of her money on this, and it really hasn't helped her at all. And so in Jewish culture, there's a connection between this physical reality and her spiritual reality, like leprosy. And it was different than leprosy because while leprosy was something you could see if you looked at a person, this was something that you couldn't see. And so she would hide it. She would uh, pull away from other people and want to be on her own. But it was like she was holding on to this like internal lie. I can't imagine the kind of grief uh, it had caused this woman for all these years. So I'm trying to understand that like in today's context. I remember when the news came, I'm old enough to remember when the news came about this new sickness called HIV AIDS and what HIV AIDS did to our culture, how it changed our culture in so many ways, still changed today because of it. Back in 1980, it was a, a completely new and ununderstood thing and how that would label people or how that would affect relationships. I want you to kind of take maybe that idea and lay it over the top of, of what we're seeing in God's word. And there was a scripture that's connected to this that is so power, no, powerful, knowing what kind of bleeding we're talking about. And it comes from Isaiah cha chapter 64, verse 6. It says, all of us have become like one who is unclean and all of our righteousness, all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. And I'm not talking about the kind that you clean grease off your car engine with. This is, this is talking about something female. And what God is doing here is he's showing this contrast between the holy and the unholy and even though we might have secret sins or secret issues that keep us away from God, God sees those. Maybe the rest of the world doesn't, but, but God does. He's showing me in this scripture in Isaiah just how different we are, God and myself. And this woman is like an illustration of that. So here's how I see her. She's crawling on the street. She's on her hands and knees. Everybody else is walking with Jesus. It says that there's this great crowd and she's trying to get to Jesus. And she says, if I could only touch the hem of his garment, I could be clean. Well, where's the hem of his garment? It's, it's down by his feet. I see her being kicked and pushed and cursed at because people are tripping over her. But she can't see that. She just wants to touch the hem of his garment. And in that moment, in that split second, immediately, she's healed. Well, not completely healed. Her bleeding is gone. But there's something more than just that circumstance, that situation. There's kind of a, a post-traumatic stress disorder here. You see, she's so used to being disconnected from her people and her God, she just tries to slink back into the crowd so no one will notice her. But Jesus said, somebody touched me. Now everybody's pressing in on Jesus. And he goes, somebody touched me? Are you kidding? And he finds that woman. And do you know what he says? He says that she is a daughter. And he 
realizes that there's a healing that goes beyond the physical, and it's in the emotional. You know, in the Old Testament, we read the story of the Hebrew slaves and how uh, they're delivered by God, and God uses Moses as the deliverer to get them out of Egypt. But even though they are freed from Egypt, even though physically they're no longer under their Egyptian taskmasters in their hearts, they're still slaves. Like you can get the slavery out of the circumstance or the context, but it was hard to get it out of the heart. It took an entire generation for that. And you know what? I think that is true about us. I think there's a bondage that we can see and there's a bondage that we can't see. And since we're talking about wrecking the roof, I think there's roofs that we can see and there's roofs that are hard for us to see. Like it's a blind spot. We can't see it. We don't recognize it. And you know what I'm praying is that the time that we're spending together in God's word and the time that we're spending on the weekend when we're worshiping with others, help us to see the roofs, not just the ones that we know about, but maybe the ones that have been escaping us, that maybe we could look in our hearts and we could see the things that we're trying to hide, the secrets that we're trying to keep from others, that God can expose and then deal with so that we can worship Him and honor Him with everything that we have. Something to consider. And while you're doing that, I want you to watch this video from one of the people of our church just sharing their heart with you. I want you to be encouraged and inspired by that. My name's David. This is my wife, Mona. We are from the uh, Macomb campus. Been a part of the church for about a decade. It's been great for us. And our children have been a part of that even though they've moved away now. We have two sons and we have six grandchildren and we love for them to be part of crossing any which way and they're very much at home at the crossing. When we first came to the crossing, I found um, what my heart was longing for, friendships, uh, a sense of openness and invitation, no pressure. I love that. Participation in the small group and hosting it for a number of years has been a very rich experience for David and I. A bunch of babies were born, a couple of people got engaged, got married, had babies. So we just saw this beautiful blossoming. Loved it very, very much. Still love it. One thing that excites me is something that happened today at noon here in Quincy. When we were in a restaurant, I uh, had a chat with somebody in the next table. He said, well, what brought you to Quincy? And so I told him that I was going to come down here and try to help out in the best way I could. And he said, well, what church would that be? And I told him, he says, yeah, yeah, right here in Quincy. I said, yeah. He says, you know, I don't know whether this is true or not, but he said, well, that's the fastest growing church in the state of Illinois and the second fastest growing church in the United States of America. Well, that's exciting. And to be a part of that, well, you, you gotta enjoy it and you gotta love it and you gotta want it. You know, Bible talks about giving sacrificially. Walk of faith requires that. And the benefit is all ours, whether we realize that or not. So more we, more I practice my faith, richer it gets. Generosity to me is like that. What can I not use on myself that can do some good somewhere else? Wrecking the roof sounds a little scary when you're faced with giving something really significant. And yet, we wrecked our roof one time, partly because of our activities and partly because of the economy, but we were broke, so bad broke, you have no idea. It was all financial. 
And we found in working our way through that, that it was um, like a roller coaster ride. You take a roller coaster ride, you get a lot of anxiety up front. There may be some, some ups, there may be some downs, and there will be. But then in the end, when you get off the roller coaster, you go, wow, what a ride, can I do it again? And we went through our financial struggles. It took us seven years to pay back the creditors. But here I sit today, and I say, wow, what a ride. And I do it all again. And so, wreck the church's roof, or wreck the roof for the church, however you want to say it, I recommend it. Because it'll be a ride, you may say, wow. Can I do it again?